Welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use the parametric studies and automated calibration options to try and um, improve whatever potential you have to better match values that you have as calibration targets. First thing we're going to look at is the parametric studies. I've gone ahead um, and added one thing from last time, this new elastic constant, C44 as a calibration target of 31.6. That's a value I got from the literature. You can see right now um, the potential is giving us a elastic constant of C44 equal to 28.35 or so gigapascals, so very close. But we're going to try and be perfectionists on this and see if we can improve it a little bit and get it closer to that 31 that it's supposed to be. In practice, this is probably closer than you're ever going to need it, but this is a nice example. You can see how you can, how you can play with these things. Now, as you get more familiar with how mean potentials function um, and what parameters affect different things, you'll sort of get a better feel for this. But I already have looked ahead of time and have a decent idea that this um, library parameter here, T2, um, should have a decent effect on C44 and not mess with too much else. Um, so we're going to see we're going to see that by doing a, a parameter study. Do that. I right click on the label of T2, go down to parametric study. Now I'm going to choose a minimum and maximum value for T2 that I'm going to scan over and how many points I want to scan along that. And what this is going to do is it's going to calculate all the things I told it to earlier. So in this case it's E1, E2, E3, and our elastic constants for the potential of all those different values of T2 put in for our potential. So we, our value right now is minus 2.3. We'll go from say minus 5 to 5. All of these calculations are pretty quick, so we don't have any problem doing the maximum number of values now. If we were doing something that was a little slower, you might only want three or four values. Or if, you're, if the plots that you'll see in a second are too cluttered, you might want to do fewer values. But we'll just go ahead and do 9 for right now. Let it run. And now it goes through each value um, of those 9 between minus 5 and 5 for T2 and gives us plots. Showing first E1, which is again our energy versus volume curve for the FCC. We see that compared to the distance we have um, from where we were and what our calibration target is, it doesn't do a whole lot. Which for right now is fine. Again, what we're focused on is C44, but we can also see if it's, if it's hurting anything that we had previously. Similarly with E2 and E3. Um, you know, if when we get small enough, apparently something strange is happening, but if we, just, if we avoid getting too small with this, we're okay. But that's a good indication that if, you, that if we make T2 too small, bad things might start happening to our system. So we don't want to get down to the minus 5 range. Um, what we're actually interested in here, the elastic constant C. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. There we go. And we can see each of our elastic constants, C11, C12, and C44, for each of the values of T2, going from minus 5 to 5. We can see that C11 and C12 are not very strongly affected by changing this parameter, while C44 changes drastically. And this is what this is ideally what we want to see. If we only want to change C44, it looks like for the limited number of outputs we've looked at, changing T2 is a good option to just change C44. And we see we want a value here somewhere between minus 2 and minus 1. We'll try we'll try minus 1 and a half. So I'm going to turn off the parametric study, just unclick this checkbox, and then we're back in the normal normal mode. And I can go back up here and we can see our three energy versus volume curves again. So I'll go over here and I'll change T2 from minus 2.3 to minus 1.5. Go ahead and run this again. It will now run all those same things just for this one value. Again, our energy volume curves have not changed much. C11 has not changed much. C12 has not changed much. C44, now we see we've overshot a little bit. It's at 34. It was at 29 or so. We want 31. And we can fine tune that a little bit, let's say minus 1.75. And again, we already know from our parametric study that we're not hurting much else. And we see we're getting a little closer to 32.6 or so. Um, we could keep tuning that even finer just going by hand like I was just doing, 
or doing finer and finer parametric studies, say scanning from minus 2 to minus 1.6 or something like that. And you can use this with any of the parameters, um, including these um, inputs from the parameter files, but as a library file. These are a little more complicated. I'll just show you that real quick. If we wanted to change Cmax, we need to put in a particular Cmax. The default value is 2.8. We'll leave that as it is for right now. And then we have these IJK parameters. Again, we're looking at just aluminum, which was number two. So these will all be twos. And you can read more about the details of this either on the LAMPS page or in, in any kind of discussion of how the mean potential works. Just know that right now I'm just specifying that we want to only look at the Cmax for aluminum. And then I can perform parametric studies of that like I would anything else. Or input values like I would for anything else. And I'll just go ahead and delete this value. Again, any values that are not in the parameter file, uh, meme assumes a default value for. And I'll just run this again so we can get our pictures up. Next, I'm going to show you really quick the uh, calibration option. This is to get the MPC tool to try and automatically tune parameters to match calibration targets you've given it. As we saw before, we have this significant gap between what DFT told us our energy versus volume curve should look like and what the potential is predicting. And so we're going to try and change some parameters to match those better. Again, already knowing something about meme ahead of time, I know a good thing to start with is this E sub parameter. The best way to sort of figure these things out is by playing around some with the tool, like I mentioned, doing parametric studies, changing values, and seeing what happens. So I'm going to add E sub to our calibration parameter list. I'm going to give an initial value that it's going to search around and give it a range. This is probably fine right here between 3 and 4. Probably not going to have to change it more than that. Okay. I also know ahead of time that as we move these things up and down, the curvature might change slightly, so I'm going to add alpha as well. Um, again, this is just something that you get from intuition after time or from knowing better how meme works. And you can play with this as much as you need to to try and figure out what parameters are going to affect what. I'll also add it to the calibration study. can start where it is, and we'll scan between 4 and 5. Okay, so right now if we do a calibration study, it's going to try and change E sub and alpha to best match whatever calibration targets we give it. To add calibration targets, I right click on this box here, go to the calibration targets I want. Again, all I'm going to be interested in this time, because they should all hopefully move together, is this FCC curve, this E1 versus A1 curve. And as it goes up and down to try and better match it, these other two should as well. So I'll select curve E1, A1 as the calibration target. And now I can even specify which of these points I want. I can have it fit all of them, 1 through 41. Or if I just wanted to fit the bottom down here, I could you know, pick points 15 through 25 or something like that. And sometimes all you really care about is you want that minimum energy correct or the, the curvature right at the bottom correct. So that's why you might do that. Right now, I'm just going to leave it as all the points in this curve. So now it's going to try and fit by changing E sub and alpha. It's going to try and get our teal curve here to match exactly these points. Okay. We can see down here everything we've put in. The parameters it's going to change are E sub over these values and alpha over these values. And the target it's going to try and match is this E1 versus A1 curve. Once that's all set up, we can click Run. And now it's going to start or, um, automatically trying different values of different parameters, trying to get to, the, to match up correctly. Depending on how many different parameters you give it to change, how many targets you get it to fit, and how complicated the calculations are it needs to perform, this can take a good bit longer. If you gave it seven, eight different um, things to change and you asked it to calculate some very complicated things like the generalized stacking fault energy, this could take a lot longer. In our case, it went very quickly because this is trying to match one thing that it can calculate quickly. We see it's changed E sub now to this value here, this 3.69, and alpha to this 4.17. And lo and behold, we match our curve now beautifully. And indeed, our BCC and HCP curves have also moved down well. And we could keep going and changing other things to try and get these to match up better without affecting FCC. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of, of the different tools you have to try and manipulate your potential, looking at parametric studies, and using the automatic calibration options available in MPC.